If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel, as well as follow me and subscribe to me on all my other social media platforms. <laughs>
they just happen to throw in some speed metal and some punk in there. Kind of like a German thrash equivalent to Motorhead is what this album is. And while a lot of <coughs> Sodom fans are not the biggest fan of this, I like it. I still enjoy it for what it is. Then we get to another one of those experimental uh, periods of thrash albums, Testament Low. Even though this was ranked lower on my Testament ranking, it's still a great album. One of the better groove metal albums from a non-groove metal band. I mean, songs like the title track, uh, Dog Face Gods, just killer songs all around. And while this, the Time Ghoul CD I have, does contain one of my favorite demos of all time, their 1994 Panoramic Twilight demo, which was huge in the death metal underground in that time period. It's just a shame they broke up afterwards, but yeah, Panoramic Twilight demo by Time Ghoul, huge underrated gem in 94. <clears throat> but now let's take a look at some of the other best albums of 1994 when it comes to metal. And I have them in alphabetical order, so I'm not going to say this is my favorite of the year and all this and that. I'm just going to showcase them. Starting off with Amorphous, Tales from the Thousand Lakes. So yeah, this was the second album from these Finnish metal legends, and this was still in their early death metal, death doom phase. Definitely pushing more towards <clears throat> the whole melodic death metal idea that was just starting up in Sweden and the UK with Carcass and all the other Swedish bands, but Amorphous kind of took it in a little more of a darker, more emotional kind of uh, path. After all, you got some cool songs like First Doom, The Father, To the Father's Cabin, Magic and Mayhem. But the song Black Winter Day, one of the best melodic death metal and, dare I say, progressive metal songs of the 90s. After all, this was kind of them starting to push into more prog territory. Like, there's always been elements of prog and melodic death metal in the Amorphous albums ever since, except for maybe one or two. But yeah, this album was kind of like the genesis of the new era for Amorphous going forward. Like, less of the brutality and the doominess and more towards <coughs> the borderline prog side of melodic death metal. So yeah, arguably Amorphous' best album I don't know, there might come the day where I have to rank Amorphous, and that's going to be a bitch and a half because they're very consistent. But yeah, this was a hell of an album for 1994. Next up, I've gushed about this album many times on this channel, as well as over at Instagram. Asphyx is self-titled. Which I still say is the most underrated album in the Asphyx catalog, because this is one of three albums where... Martin Van Drunen isn't on vocals. This is Ron Van Pohl on vocals and bass, I believe. But, yeah, this is just super underrated. Very much a hidden gem in not only Death Doom, but in Death Metal. Because this was the doomiest yet thrashiest album Asphyx ever did. The production I absolutely love with Andy Clausen doing the production. Classic songs on here for me, like Depths of Eternity, Initiation into the Ossuary, Back into Eternity, Thoughts of an Atheist. Like, top to bottom, this is some brilliant death doom done by the true pioneers of the genre. So, definitely check this out. If you have slept on this album, please give it a listen. Please, please, please. <clears throat> Moving on to maybe my favorite album of the entire bunch, if I am going to choose a favorite, and that's Cannibal Corpse, The Bleeding. I'm going to talk more in depth about this album when I do the Cannibal Corpse ranking here in a couple of months, but I'll just say one of the best death metal albums of all time, and I'm going to leave it at that because I'll gush more about it in just two months' time. Next up, we get to <clears throat> probably one of the best prog metal albums to come out in the history of the genre, Dream Theater Awake. This was the follow-up to their massive album, Images and Words, thanks to Pull Me Under and some other good songs. But this, I believe this came out a little bit before 
Korn's yeah. debut came out, which I don't have that Korn album in the collection. But this was, I think, the first album to use the seven-string guitars. So Petrucci was already ahead of the game when it came to experimenting with more strings on a guitar and the different tunings you could do, as well as some cool riff structures and great leads. After all, this album's just got so many killer songs like Six O'Clock, The Silent Man being their softer track on here, The Mirror, Lie, Caught in a Web, like... And this is another album I'm going to talk more in depth about whenever I do the Dream Theater ranking in 2024. So yeah, if you've slept on this one, I don't know how you have, but check it out. Next up, we're talking about an album I talked about recently on the Edge of Sanity ranking, and that's Purgatory Afterglow. You know my opinion on this album. It's, it's a hell of an album because it's basically two EPs mashed into one. I talked about that in the Edge of Sanity ranking, but yeah, it's like half of the album, they were going for a more hard rock experimental side, and then the other half being their more death metal centric sound, but definitely getting more progressive and melodic by this point. After all, Twilight of Darksome Origin, Elegy, Velvet Dreams, The Center and the Sadness, amazing album, top to bottom. If you want to know my full opinion about it, Check out my Edge of Sanity album ranking and you'll understand. But yeah, this made the cut. Now we get into really what 1994 is most remembered for, and that's black metal. No Dark Throne, because I'm not the biggest fan of Transylvanian Hunger, which I know sounds like blasphemy, but that's just me. But if I had to choose the creme de la creme of black metal in 1994... It's Emperor and the Nightside Eclipse. I mean, arguably top two, three black metal album, period. Like, this album just has everything I love about black metal and then some. Like, introducing prog and symphonic elements into a genre that's structurally very raw, stripped down. They decide to go for a more sophisticated approach and really kind of embrace songwriting maturity and experimentation. I mean, <clears throat> songs like Beyond the Great Vast Forest, Towards the Pantheon, I Am the Black Wizards, Inno a Satana, like, this is just brilliant, brilliant Norwegian black metal, but also pioneering for symphonic black metal and even progressive black metal. But yeah, classic album, nothing more, nothing less can be said. Now let's get into something more brutal, and that is Incantation, Mortal Throne of Nazarene. This is the classic sophomore album from these diabolical cavernous pioneers for death metal here in America. And just, holy shit, this album is just raw, nasty, and sinister sounding. I mean, songs like Iconoclasm of Catholicism, The Ibex Moon, Abolishment of Immaculate Serenity, which is one of my favorite incantation songs, period. Granted, yeah, the drum production may not be the best, but I love the guitar tone on here. It might be pretty gainy, but it has a sizzle to it that kind of screams a little bit black metal-ish at times. But yeah, this is a fantastic, fantastic cavernous album for death metal in the mid-90s. And then back to black metal real quick, we have, of course, Mayhem de Mysterious Dom Satanus. I mean, I talked about this album a bunch, especially in the Mayhem album ranking video I did this past summer. But, yeah, this is another one of the best black metal albums of all time. If there was such a subgenre as brutal black metal... This would be one of the pioneering albums, I would say, because this album, not only is it evil and atmospheric, but it's fucking brutal, especially with the speed and the riffing going on here. Of course, the most tragic backstory of any album in metal, but still, fantastic songs, regardless of how you feel about the people involved. But yeah, mayhem. <clears throat> the penultimate album, and kind of a controversial one, a polarizing one, Napalm Death, Fear, Emptiness, Despair. 
Yeah, this was at the beginning of their more groove era that was that would take over for the rest of the decade. But in terms of that groovy era, this was easily the best work. Like I would still say this is just straight up groovy death metal with some grindy parts here and there. But tracks like Hung, Plague Rages, More Than Meets the Eye, Armageddon Times 7. This is some fun, fun stuff right here. <clears throat> Despite how Shane thinks this is his least favorite album, I still think it's a hell of an album to say the very least. And next to, I would say, not as good as Harmony Corruption or Utopia Banished, but easily one of the better albums of the 90s when it was really challenging for Napalm Death, experimenting with so much and some division within the band over it. But still, great album. What more can you say? And then finally, I brought it up briefly in the outset of this video, but Pantera Far Beyond Driven. I know a lot of the metal elitists are going to be like, you are a fake Pantera fan or Pantera sucks, but I don't give a shit. This is a great album. I don't give a fuck what you haters think. This is an awesome album. I mean, one of the heaviest albums of the year like dimes tone on this album just got more chunky and more distorted and just more punch and crunch to it phil's voice got even more insane on here the rhythms from vinnie paul got really out of just going all over the map and of course like i said debuted at number one on the billboard charts easily the heaviest album to debut at number one on billboard and for good reason. This album, it's fantastic. May not be my favorite Pantera album, which might be a slight spoiler because I will be ranking Pantera in April. And that opinion might change, you never know. But yeah, hell of an album, regardless as to how you feel about Pantera, but whatever. And that, ladies and gentlemen, does it for this video. I still got one more video left in the back pocket for this year, and that will be the most anticipated albums of 2024 video that will be coming out tomorrow, as well as at 7 o'clock Eastern Time tomorrow, I'm going to be live streaming, talking with you guys, and doing a special giveaway of a bunch of stuff that I need to get rid of. So... Be here on the channel tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. We're going to have a hell of a good time. But until then, let me know what are your favorite albums of 1994. Let me know in the comments. And until next time, keep your horns high and your dreams wet.